Wisdom. It's an incredibly valuable asset. Some would say more precious than gold. It's attractive, appealing, admirable. Conversely, a lack of wisdom is the basis of immaturity, blind spots, and bad decisions. Wisdom. It can be gained over time, but it can't be rushed. But wisdom can be shared. That's precisely what we are here to do right now. Today, we are here to hack wisdom, to distill it, to understand it, and to process it. Why? To get better at life. Welcome to The Main Thing. This is your new nine-minute podcast. I'm your host, Skip Lineberg, and I've set out to interview the wisest people I know. We'll see what we can learn from each one when they're faced with an incredibly difficult, soul-piercing question. Welcome back to The Main Thing Podcast. I'm your host, Skip Lineberg, that guy who brings you nine-minute doses of wisdom from the wisest people I know. Hey, at the risk of sounding like a broken record here, if you're not yet a subscriber, can I convince you to do that today? Why would you do that? Two reasons. Number one, you'll get each new episode first before anyone else sees it or hears it. Second, it really helps this podcast, increases our visibility, helps others find the wisdom they need to get better at life, to grow. We all like to help folks, right? And we all like to get things first. Are you sold? Okay, great. Our special guest today, Hans Apple, is an educator, speaker, and writer deeply committed to inspiring the whole child. He's the author of Award-Winning Culture, Building School-Wide Intentionality and Action Through Character, Excellence, and Community. That's his book. Additionally, he's the director of culture for the Teach Better team, co-host of the Award-Winning Culture podcast, and he's the co-creator of Award-Winning Culture. Hans and his wife, Jen, reside in Kennewick, Washington. Buckle up, get ready. Over the next nine minutes, you will discover why Hans Apple is one of the wisest people I know. Hans, good morning. Welcome to the Main Thing Podcast, and thank you for making time to join us. Oh, thanks for having me, Skip. I'm a fan of the show, so I love people that are making the world a special place, and I think you're doing that. Hans, you're coming to us from Kennewick, Washington, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Yeah, we're about three hours east of Seattle, so. Okay. Hey, paint us a quick word picture. Give us 20, 30 seconds. Give us a verbal tour of Kennewick. What's your city like? Help us relate to you with where you're coming from. Yeah, I would say it's very similar to like Napa Valley, like Northern California. So it's kind of like apple orchards and wineries and golf courses. Um, I think a lot of times people think of Washington as being like evergreens. And that's really more the west side. Okay. It's more on the, the Seattle side where there's a lot of rain. So we're more, I I would say, a deserty type climate, but it's kind of cool because, like I said, it it creates, uh, you know, quite a bit of amazing uh, produce and things like that 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 have kind of become a Mm. hotbed for wineries and apple orchards. So, oh wow, okay, I'm coming to visit. (laughs) Sold. Getting more specific, let's help our listeners understand how you and I met and got connected. Um, We have two connections in common, don't we? We do. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I kind of think back about, uh, another guest that you had on, uh, I can't remember the episode number right off the top of my head, but, uh, <laughs> Dennis Gillian, right. Yes. Uh, who's doing some amazing work, uh, in schools and in businesses, uh, speaking and inspiring and him and I sort of became connected. And, uh, I think that might've been the initial, uh, thing that drew you and I together. Yeah. Dennis Gillian was on episode six. He, uh, I've, I've known him since, uh, I was a freshman in college, so I've known him most of my life. And uh, Dennis, like you said, is doing some amazing work in his mission. His passion is suicide prevention. And folks, go back to episode six and check out uh, Dennis. That's one of the most popular episodes of all time. The other connection we have is uh, Dr. Jack Bird from West Virginia University. You were kind enough to connect with him and, and see if you guys could find some synergy between what he's doing with his Virtues and Values project in yours, which we'll talk yeah. more about. Yeah, we're, we're, we're definitely excited to sort of partner with him um, on uh, similar missions. And, and so that's cool. He's coming at it from the college side. We're coming at it more from the K-12 uh, educational side. So right. it's fun when missions align, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I get that, that really motivates me. It gets me excited. Share with the audience why the topic of schools and school culture is so uh, important to you, so near and dear to your heart. 
Yeah. So Skip, you know, growing up, I was your classic ACEs kid, like adverse childhood experiences. Okay. Um, ACEs. So A-C- ACEs. Yep. Yes. Yep. And so, um, you know, child of divorce, abusive home, health issues. So I always tell people I could predict what kind of evening it was going to be with my dad based on how the back door slammed. Oh my gosh. Right? There was a certain noise, a certain frequency I would listen for. Yeah. I knew how it was going to go with my dad based on that back door. Ah. So at an early age, um, you know, I would scatter. I would, you know, pull my des- best disappearing act. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So for me, school became my safe haven, my place that could go. I could be age appropriate. I didn't have to worry about solving complicated adult emotional issues. Yeah. I could just be a kid, right? It was glorious. Thank goodness. Yeah. Yeah. And so my friends, my coaches, my teachers, they became like family to me. Okay. So people that wonder where my passion for big ideas like kindness and empathy and school culture come from, the roots can be directly traced back to those early childhood moments Yeah. from intentional educators that were focused on far more than math, science, and history. And I think, I think Skip, you know, when we think about academic content, perhaps academic content is just a vehicle (laughs) to teach kids what matters most, which is character, excellence, and community. Well, that's a really, really valuable perspective. I hadn't thought about that, but absolutely could be, and perhaps should be. And if it helps kids like it helped you, then I'm all for it. Well, Hans, thanks for helping us to get to know you a bit. And we're at that moment in in this short format podcast, about nine minutes of time, because our audience is busy. We better get down to it. So I'll ask you that pivotal question that I ask each and every one of my wise guests. Hans Apple, what's the main thing you've learned in your lifetime so far? Skip, I think the main thing that I've learned in my lifetime so far is that I believe education at its highest level is about inspiring others to discover and develop their joy. And isn't that what life is all about, Skip? Like living out your why, understanding your own unique strengths and passions and aligning those to some deeper meaning. Yes. Some people call that purpose, right? Right. I know that when we take the time to create an award-winning culture, right, in our schools, in our homes, in our organizations, we provide our children with the opportunity to pursue joy. So Hans, your wisdom, education at its highest level, is about inspiring others to discover and develop their joy. I love that. Let's unpack that a bit. Let's dig into it. When did that distill for you in, inside you, inside your, yourself, for you to say, this is what it's all about. This is pure, undisputable wisdom that I'm going to carry with me, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to color everything that I do. When, when did that set for you? Well, I, I think it's, the seeds were certainly there when I was a kid, right? Yes. But I think watching the influence that a group of educators in collaboration with a group of parents and a group of businesses could have on you know, the entire educational system, I think that sort of transformed you know, my thinking into, okay, we can no longer just focus on academics, right? Skip, we know that the research out there tells us that if we only focus on academics, yeah. we're only giving students 30 to 50% of what they need to be successful after high school. Wow. We're really shortchanging them. Yeah. Yeah. We're shortchanging. That means if we do everything that we're supposed to do as educators, right, we're actually failing our kids. And and the funny thing is you talk to college professors, you talk to business folks, they see it. They see it in their new employees and their, in their higher ed students. Kids are not prepared for life, right? We need to be thinking about all the soft skills, right? The emotional regulation, the critical thinking, problem solving, relationship skills, leadership, all of these key things that oftentimes get put on the back burner in K-12 education. Right, right. Yeah, for sure. Hans, what percentage of educators and administrators in education would you say embrace that wisdom that you shared? It's a good question. I, I would say most folks embrace it uh, at their core. But I think a lot of times life gets in the way, right? We feel like, okay, this is going to be another thing on the plate. And I think my my good friend, John Norlin has this saying, he says that SEL and character ed, those aren't another thing 
on the plate. Those are actually the plate. <laughs> Those are the things that everything else skip resides on. We can't get to math and science and history and all the other things that matter in the world until we have that plate of foundation, right? Right. Right. So from what I'm hearing from you, a growing percentage, and if your mission is effective, um, yeah, quite quite a bit of growth on that percentage, that slice of the pie. Yeah, because we know that, you know, if you spend $1 on SEL and character ed in schools, that has an $11 impact. Oh, my in gosh. Our society. Wow. 11, 11 to, to 1. 11 to 1 impact. Wow. Right. Oh, I mean, tell me out with, the, with terminology there. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, SEL. Right. That, so SEL stands for social emotional learning. Okay, cool. Right? And, and a lot of folks in business think of that in terms of those soft skills. So your wisdom is that education should be about uh, creating experiences and environment for, for kids to discover their true self and to discover joy. Yeah, and I think, Skip, joy is found at the intersection of our why, of our values, of our yeah. superpower, of our work that we do, and of all of our human connections. For sure. And, and I think the interesting thing is that alignment of all of those key things, what is the implication there? Well, the implication is gratitude, right? The yeah. implication is that I am aware of who I am and what I'm about. I love that perspective. And when that's true, we're all making impact and we're making the world a better place. For sure. Yeah, because we feel freer. Uh, we're not operating out of fear. And we're not operating out of a scarcity mentality, but an abundance mentality. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, when we think about the world that we're talking in right now, Skip, right, we're, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We know that we know that pre pandemic, our students today have as much anxiety as the average psychiatric patient of the 1950s. Oh, my gosh. That's in other so words, sad. Skip, most That's kids so that are sad. walking yeah. around would have been hospitalized for how they're feeling on the inside. Uh. Oh my gosh, that's, it's heartbreaking. That's pre-pandemic, right? So wow. we know that's only gotten like more pronounced, right? For sure. So yeah. this, this, I think this work and seeing students as a whole learner, right? In education, we use this word whole child a lot, seeing them as a whole human being. Right. I think that's critical. And I, and I think, you know, for a lot of folks, that's not new, but I think the pandemic has, has given us all that pause to go, okay, let's reimagine education. Let's reimagine what we're doing as far as learning right now. I'm all for that. Hans, thanks for adding that uh, incredibly valuable wisdom to this wisdom conversation on the Main Thing podcast. Uh, I'm so glad that you shared what you did. Well, Hans, that's uh, where, where we'll leave it for now. Uh, this has been a fascinating conversation. Uh, folks, I encourage you to uh, check out Hans' book, uh, his website, his podcast, all those resources will be for you in the show notes. Hans, thank you so much. I've had a pleasure. So thanks for having me, Skip. Wow, nine minutes is up. That goes by incredibly fast, doesn't it? Time flies when you're hacking wisdom. I hope you're left wanting more. Sync up with us again next time on The Main Thing for nine more minutes of wisdom. Hi, it's Skip here. You've heard about our merchandise store for the Main Thing Podcast. And I want to tell you about our bookshop. It's an online independent bookstore where you can find and order the books that were written, recommended, and discussed by guests of the Main Thing Podcast. Just check the show notes for a link that'll take you to bookshop.org slash shop slash the main thing. Buy some books, support independent local booksellers, and support the guests of the Main Thing Podcast.